Hello all and uh, welcome to today's uh, New Economy Fireside Chat Series with me. I'm your host uh, Ashish Mehra. I'm the Chief Research Officer at Markets and Markets. And at m and we take great pride in transforming market intelligence into revenue impact for our clients. Uh, we largely focus on researching disruptive futuristic trends uh, and emerging technologies, which could lead to significant shifts in your revenues in the coming decade or so. And through these new, fire econ new economy fireside chats, our objective is really to share actionable insights on new revenue growth opportunities, which could be emanating from disruptions in your ecosystem, right? Most of this is really based on the client work that we've done or from the research that we conduct. Now, uh, a few weeks back, we were talking a lot about sustainability and I'm very pleased to bring that thread back today. Uh, and uh, the topic today is lithium ion battery recycling. And for that, I'm very pleased to welcome my guest for today, Lakshmi who heads our chemicals and materials practice. Lakshmi, very warm welcome. Hi, Ashish. Thanks for the opportunity provided. Yeah, hi, I would like to introduce myself as uh, Lakshmi Narayan, heading chemicals and materials division of Markets and Markets. Very nice to see you all. Thank you so much, Lakshmi. So Lakshmi, uh, you know, of course, electric vehicles is where most people recognize uh, lithium ion batteries with. And we're moving one step ahead into lithium-ion battery recycling now. So help us understand the importance of this, uh, you know, the recycling piece. So how many lithium-ion batteries do we have today? What's the future forecast? Uh, and what are the implications if these are not recycled? Yes, Ashish. Yeah. So one thing about lithium-ion batteries here is... Uh, Always we used to call it as an end of life batteries. So every battery has a shelf life of uh, seven to eight years. So after that, uh, that battery has to be recovered or recycled. Otherwise there will be a big problem for the environment. So that is the key actually. So now if you look at, uh, uh, let's say 2020 or 2021, there are somewhere around 300,000 tons of battery wastes are there in the world. And out of which, if you look at, the battery waste which are recovered, which is just 50 percentage of that, which means 150,000 tons. So remaining 150,000 tons of battery wastes are just drained into the atmosphere and that is creating huge harm for the green economy or the whole world. So that is the reason why these batteries has to be recycled. And the another reason is obviously yes, the recycled batteries will have enhanced lifespan beyond the end of life and it will augur well for the economy as well. So these are all the couple of reasons why the battery has to be recycled. Great. So Lakshmi, uh, thanks for that background. Uh, let's maybe take the lens of a battery material manufacturer or a recycling, recycling company. And let's do what we do best, which is uh, providing insights on market potential and where to play, right? And let's start with the market potential piece. So help us understand how big is this market today? What do you see as the future growth prospects and what will drive growth? So now, as I told before, everything on battery recycling depends purely on lithium ion batteries circulating in the market. So the batteries which are produced in 2015 or 16, that is up for recycling at this point of time. That's 2021 or 2022. So that is where the dynamics plays. So if you look at the battery, lithium and battery market right now in 2021, it is 41.1 billion US dollars. That is right now the lithium ion battery. But if you look at this lithium ion battery recycling, the penetration is somewhere just over 11% of the overall lithium ion battery market. And this is estimated to get quadrupled by 2030. That is, if, if you take 2030, the market for lithium ion battery will be 116 billion US dollars and the lithium ion battery recycling market will be somewhere around 20 to 23 billion dollars. So it's purely depend upon the end of life batteries. Right. And uh, the major market will be for USA, second will be APAC and third will be Europe. Got it. 
So let's talk a little bit more through the where to play choices, which, uh, you know, which a lithium ion battery manufacturer or a recycling company will need to make. One is obviously the geographical access, and you've spoken a bit about it. But in addition to that, uh, you know, uh, where should one place bets in terms of technologies, uh, in terms of applications or end use industries as well? If you could talk a bit more through these. Yes, Ashish. Yeah. So now if you take lithium ion battery recycling, there are three technologies. One is hydrometallurgy, pyrometallurgy, and third one is physical mechanical. So these three technologies plays a major role. Some company uses hydrometallurgy, some companies uses pyrometallurgy, or there are companies uses both in combination, hydrometallurgy as well as pyrometallurgy. So some of the companies example are Umicore, Fortum, American Magnes, Lithium Recycling, and again, Redwood Materials. These are all the companies playing in these two spaces. And the third category is physical and mechanical. So if you look at the usage pattern or the dominative nature, this hydro and pyro metallurgy techniques are widely used. Maybe we can say 70 percentage of the companies, they use these two technologies or in combination. The third category is physical and mechanical. There are very few companies like uh, raw materials, zinc, raw materials company, RMC, we call it as an American zinc recycling and Accurac recycling. So these are all the companies, they are fully utilizing this physical and mechanical techniques. Why there is a low preference for physical and mechanical techniques, the recovery rates are very, very low, uh, which means you can say that 70 percentage of uh, battery can be recovered. But whereas in hydrometallurgy and pyrometallurgy, almost 90 to 95 percentage can be recovered. So this is the reason that these two techniques are more popular. And between the two, which one do you think is going to be the winner in about 10 years from now? Uh, this is hyd hydro and pyro in combination. That will be the winner, actually. That no one technology will be used. So both this uh, technology in combination, because both are having positives and negatives, uh, pyro as well as hydro. So obviously, as the combination of this pyro and hydro, who are adopting this kind of technology, they will be the winner in the next 10 years down the line. And Lakshmi, uh, what should be the, I mean, obviously, we know that electric vehicles is the main end use industry for lithium ion batteries. But if you had to just open the aperture on that, tell us a bit more about other end use industry and uh, where should companies focus? So uh, now if you take the lithium ion battery recycling market, obviously, yes, uh, automotive industry plays a major role. Uh, for instance, if you take, let's say uh, 2021, whether it is China or Japan, so almost 50% of the batteries recycled are from automotive in nature. And this is the same case with uh, USA as well as Europe. That, that's what the statistic says. And if you look at the non-automotive sectors, there are two types. One is industrial and second one is consumer electronics. So in these two categories, if you take automatically, yes, consumer electronics uh, will consume almost 60 to 70% and industrial will be having 20 to 30%. So this is how the industry split is happening. And uh, uh, that is that is going to be uh, stable for next five to 10 years down the line because so much of EV advent is happening. So automatically that EV is going to win the race and followed by consumer electronics and other industries. I think that's an interesting perspective uh, from, you know, from a TAM expansion standpoint, I think one can definitely look beyond electric vehicles as well. So Lakshmi, uh, Tell me a bit more, uh, tell our audience a bit more about the countries, the opportunities in specific countries and regions, uh, uh, you know, and that would help them prioritize where to play. We do know China is important, but, in, you know, what's happening in China and therefore what could be the opportunities in certain other countries or regions? So uh, right now, if you look at the penetration rate, uh, let's say, for example, we did a lot of uh, surveys as well as uh, uh, studies conducted across different geographies. So uh, one thing here for is there is a huge opportunity for this battery recycling globally. And it has happened much more in a faster rate in APAC region. For instance, in 2017, China government has put a ban on e-waste, importing e-waste. So that opened up an opportunity for various companies to find an alternative location. Because earlier China China was ha is having even now it is having seventy percentage of capacity for battery recycling, 
in the total world. So when this China government has put a ban, these companies are obviously they have to find somewhere different location for battery recycling. So when we studied this here, if you look at the market right now, it is the penetration of battery recycling is 50 percentage, 45 to 50 percentage. If 100 batteries are manufactured, the recycled rate is somewhere around 40 to 50 percentage. So usually we call it as in uh, uh, tons, number of tons available. So if you look at 300,000 tons are available right now, only 150,000 tons are recycled. So now China also put a ban. These com com companies are finding ways to find different alternative location. That is the major key focus. And it again depends upon the various factors such as uh, uh, the cell cost. The, what we found is this, uh, the cell cost is not, uh, that much increased and China is still have uh, cheapest battery pack prices like 111 kilowatt and US pack price is very high like 155 kilowatt hour. So this price differentiation is also happening in many places. So automatically this China and the surrounding places plays a major role in uh, uh, venturing into this kind of uh, technologies. And uh, if you look at the opportunity, USD million opportunity, our study says that uh, uh, the current recycling capacity is uh, 1000 metric tons and the estimated plan to increase the recycling capacity across different geographies is somewhere around 11,000 metric tons. And uh, these kind of things are extracting 98% of pure battery grade cobalt or nickel or graphite or manganese oxide or copper or aluminum, plasma grade lithium carbonate. So these are all the various elements that can be recycled. And these are also uh, provides a huge opportunity for that. So as per the company executives worldwide, only six companies were using smelting technology to recycle e-waste. So however, the minimum annual operating capacity of these plants stands at 100,000 tons. So for which they require 100 million US dollars. So after considering all these things, we find that uh, the lithium ion battery recycling market, the opportunity provided, for example, if you take Japan, 1,000 to 1,300 million dollar. And South Korea, anywhere between 800 to 1,000 million dollar. India, 150 to 200 million dollars. And Australia, again, 50 million US dollars, somewhere around that. So this is the opportunity where the lithium ion battery recycling is provided for all the stakeholders. If they are having a first mover advantage or even if they are starting to establish the plant right now. Great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lakshmi, for providing our audience with a perspective on uh, lithium ion battery recycling. Um, it's indeed a very exciting area uh, and, and a futuristic uh, growth area for uh, I think battery material suppliers, as well as uh, recycling companies in the near future. So folks, uh, hope you found today's talk insightful. Uh, and uh, until next week, uh, goodbye. And once again, thank you so much, Lakshmi, uh, for sharing your perspectives. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, thanks for the opportunity provided. And uh, definitely, yes, uh, this battery recycling market is going to boom, literally in 30 to 40 percent growth rate in next 10 years. And once again, thanks for the opportunity provided. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.